Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Toronto FC, the City of Vaughan, and the Ontario Soccer Association, welcome. Thank you for being here today. My name is Luke Wilman from TSN, and I'll be your host for the proceedings today. It's been quite a week for Toronto FC. It's never dull at the club, and there is plenty to talk about right now, plenty of good things to talk about. With the arrival of Josie Altador as a designated player last Friday, the signing of Italian Jovinko earlier this week. And we'll hear a lot more about this, but I think today's announcement is just as important, if not more, for the future of this football club and for soccer in Canada. Toronto FC is proud to partner with the City of Vaughan and the Ontario Soccer Association for this new venture, which you will hear a lot about over the coming minutes. Today's press conference will be formatted the following way. We'll have remarks from the head table. We'll then open the floor to questions from the media. And after that, a photo opportunity and some media scrums as well. To my left, immediately here, Greg Vanny, the head coach of Toronto FC. <laughs> Next to him, Jason Bent, who has been with the club for some time, working with the academy and also the first team as well and as assistant coach. He's now going to take charge of the USL Pro team as the head coach there. Tim Bezbachenko, the general manager of Toronto FC. <laughs> Mayor Maurizio Beveliqua, of course, from the city of Vaughan. <laughs> Almost as many cheers as for Jovinko. <laughs> and on the end, uh, Ron Smale, the president of the Ontario Soccer Association. So we'll begin by some opening remarks from the head table, starting with Tim Bezbachenko, the general manager. Thanks, Luke. Uh, first off, I just want to take a moment to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, wow, this is quite a reception, and this just uh, confirms our, our decision here to partner with the City of Vaughan and, and with Ron Smale, Smale and the, the OSA. So just want to thank you all for coming. I would like to thank our supporters for being here, and I just want to highlight two of the people in the audience with Jay Chapman and Skylar Thomas, two of our newest signings for, for TFC. So let's give them a round. So I'd like to start off with a quote from one of my, my favorite players. Um, being talented also means being a pioneer, seeing beyond current trends, and being ahead of your time. Um, I thought that was an appropriate way to, to kick off the celebration today from our newest signing, Sebastian Javinko. Uh, he's a player who, in his prime, has decided to do what no one thought was possible, uh, to see ahead of his time and to choose Toronto FC uh, and Major League Soccer to, to start his career and his next chapter of his career. Um, he has the vision and the foresight to really see above the rest. Um, we are here to formally announce uh, the creation of Toronto FC2 in partnership with the Ontario Soccer Association in the city of Vaughan. Uh, while the announcement of TSC2 will take center, center stage today, I do want to highlight two of the pioneers uh, sitting by my side today. When it comes to player development in Toronto, uh, there have been few, fewer, more enthusiastic supporters than Ron Smale in the, in the OSA. Thank you for driving uh, this forward and having the vision to see see everyone before the, the rest. Uh, likewise, I'd like to recognize our partners in, in Mauricio Bevelacqua uh, and our city of Vaughan. Um, given our proximity to Kia Training Ground and the passion and support for the game in this community, this is a perfect location for TFC2, and we are excited about having such a strong municipal partner in the city of Vaughan. Um, of course, I would also like to thank our ownership, MLSC, led by Larry Tannenbaum and our leadership, Tim Laiwicki, for the vision and support for this project. Uh, at TFC, our vision remains the same, from the U10 group up to our first team. Um, that's to be a leader in player development, to be a leader edge, leading edge organization in innovative practices, and to be a consistent contender for championships in North America. With this announcement today, we think we're hitting each of these pillars of our vision. Player development, of course. Um, this will, as Greg will talk about next, this will help fill the gap between our academy levels and our first team. Uh, leading edge organization and innovative practices. This is something new uh, with the stadium and what we're looking to do in the partnership. No other MLS club is doing this right now. So we're excited about how uh, we're thinking about things differently with community relationships, with the city, uh, with the OSA. And to be internationally recognized as a consistent contender for championships in North America. 
Um, as we were talking about with Mauricio uh, before, some, some teams think about the short term. They, they play the short game. We're here to play the long game. And it takes all the partners at this table to really step forward, uh, double down, and commit to playing to player development. Because it starts at the U8, U9, U10, all the way up through U14 levels. That's where they really develop their sound, sound fundamental skills for the game. Um, so with that, I think this is an appropriate time to turn it over to Greg uh, to talk a little bit more about the player pathway and what this means for Toronto FC and our academy. Thanks. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. For, for those who, who may not know, my actual role within the club for the past year before becoming the head coach was that of the academy director and, and helping Tim with the, the vision and future of our organization. Uh, so for me this day, um, I dare say is as exciting as the past seven days and the announcements that we've made, that if we had one mission this year uh, off the field in terms of player development, this was it, was to see this day uh, where we could have the TFC2 two, TFC two team announced. Uh, in, in that year as involved in player development, I've gotten to, to know a lot of people uh, at the OSA, Ron in, in included, uh, and I've gotten to see the young players that are here at, in this market, and there is a ton of talent in this Toronto, greater Toronto area, uh, and the Ontario area. And for me, this, this day marks their future and a pathway for them to get to the TFC1 team, right, to get to the pro team. So it's exciting. Our, our young players, as I walked in today, uh, I saw some of our academy guys and I, as I walked in, and they remind me that it's not just about today, but it's about them. They have a path now to get to this first team, and it's much clearer uh, than it ever was. Uh, I've been around the league since 1996 and been in the academy system for a while, and a lot of times we see homegrown players who are getting signed, but they have a hard time really actually making that final step and getting the preparation they need to make it to the first team. Uh, and this is that opportunity that they have now. They can start to develop their game around other pros. They can start to get matches in a competitive environment before that day comes when they're called upon to step onto the first team field and actually make a difference. And for us, that's going to increase the number of, of players that we find that will be successful in actually making that step. And ultimately, one day, our hope and our belief is that the next Giovenco, the next Michael Bradley, the next uh, Josie Altidore, our next designated players are gonna come right here through our program uh, through our TFC2, and they're going to be the guys that, that are going to be the face of our team and the face of the, uh, of the future of this league. So for me, this is an exciting day. I'm looking forward to the future. I'm, I'm very proud that, that Jason Bent is our coach, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing the young faces that are up there uh, being the representative, representatives of our club in, in the very near future. So thank you for having us. Thanks, Greg. I remember back a few years ago when Toronto FC Academy launched that uh, one of the people who helped get that off the ground was Jason Bent um, out of a small office at BMO Field. Um, and now to see where everything has grown, the facility at Downsview, what's to come now with USL Pro, it's incredible what has been done um, in the last few years. And, and Jason's been a key part of that. I'll, I'll hand it over to him now as the, the man charged with leading the USL Pro team. Thank you, Luke. Uh, first and foremost, I'm very humbled and honored uh, to be here today as the first head coach of this franchise. Um, being a local coach coming from Brampton, uh, spent a lot of time in the community, also playing uh, with the Ontario Soccer Association as a young player. And now to lead these young men out there in their next stage of their development is, uh, is very exciting, but at the same time, very humbling. Um, first and foremost, I'd ask, I have to thank Tim Bezpachanko and Greg Vanny for this opportunity. It allows me to continue in the next stage of my development as a coach and to really push on, push these players through and give Greg more options as he leads the first team. Um, I think the club has made a fantastic choice with regards to my staff. Um, Stuart Neely, who was a mentor coach for me, and as Luke mentioned, uh, we started in the academy together. Um, he's a great person and he knows Ontario soccer, say, um, Ontario soccer. he understands the, la the landscape and I think it's a fantastic choice um, to be my number two and to help push these players through. <clears throat> this next stage in their development, you know, they're gonna be used to different, uh, different things. A hard schedule, a 28 game schedule, 24 teams in the league, two conferences. They're gonna have to get used to bus travel, but all this is part of their development as young players. And we think that playing in this environment with everybody under the same roof, these players are going to really learn how to play, and, and hopefully it's a seamless transition into the first team for, for Greg Vanny and Toronto Football Club. 
So without further ado, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you everybody for the support. Vaughn is a fantastic community and uh, we embrace this next step. Thank you. Next, all the way to the end, I invite Ron Smale, President of the Ontario Soccer Association, for his remarks. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here today to uh, represent the Ontario Soccer Association and the Board of Directors. Uh, I would like to acknowledge I have a number of my uh, executive and uh, Board of Directors here this morning uh, to be participating in this uh, tremendous event. Uh, for this game to grow forward, uh, we need to be unified. We need to be uh, collectively working together and uh, this venture, this project is all about partnerships and relationships. And uh, we're going to continue to uh, work with the uh, City of Vaughan and all our other members uh, within the province of Ontario and with our uh, professional soccer club in uh, Tim's group uh, to drive this game forward. So for all the uh, young athletes who are here today, uh, this is just another stepping stone for them to participate uh, in this great venture. Uh, the timing, uh, people have always said to me, you know, timing is everything and uh, we're at a point of uh, renewing uh, our current existing uh, properties uh, at the Martin Grove site. And as such, uh, when uh, Tim and uh, Jamie and others approached me about uh, having the uh, TFC2 team uh, play their home games uh, out of uh, the Vaughan location, uh, to me it was just a, it's just a perfect fit. So we're really looking forward to uh, showcasing uh, TFC, showcasing the, uh, the game uh, from our location uh, to promote uh, our talented pathway. And uh, it is a focus on athletes. It's how athletes will achieve their highest honors uh, going forward. And at the same time, be there to service our communities. We have four great clubs within the uh, Vaughan area and uh, they'll have access to uh, the new venue and of course all the amenities that uh, will be brought forward. So this next two to three years of development and growth uh, will really see this great city of uh, Vaughan and uh, the dynamic uh, region of York region uh, continue to grow. Uh, I do want to personally thank uh, the mayor for uh, his continued support. Uh, I know that the mayor has had uh, many, many uh, discussions with us about how we can uh, continue to drive this game forward. And uh, it's just, again, another great example of um, all the work that's being done from a partnership, relationship perspective. So I want to thank you for being here today. It's an exciting day. Uh, we'll look forward to uh, our first game, July the 1st. And, uh, but more importantly, uh, we're going to look for uh, all those young athletes who are here today to be able to uh, do their best and hopefully represent our uh, country and our nation uh, at the national and professional level. So again, thank you very much. It was good to chat for a few minutes, some soccer with the mayor this morning. And as a, uh, a big soccer fan, I'm sure he's delighted with what is happening today. Mayor, your comments. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I can tell you, I'm more than delighted. By the way, Tim, this is what the stadium is going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be uh, filled. Uh, it's going to be uh, just incredible. And, and Ron, I want to just thank you very much for all the work you've done to make this happen. I don't think today would be possible uh, without the great cooperation that existed with, uh, with Ron. And, and uh, Jason, uh, bring a championship team uh, here uh, to the city of No Bar. pressure. No pressure. And, and, and Greg, what can I tell you? Um, I'll drive all the way down to Toronto to see you win a championship as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about championship teams, I get to work with some, uh, a great team here in City Hall that I want to introduce to you, uh, Tim and everyone. Uh, they're right in front of us. Uh, Sandra Young Rocco is here, and Rosanna De Francesca, and Mario Ferry, and Gina Rosati, and Marinai Afredi, and of course, Tony Corella is there. Tony's really happy the center's in his ward. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I want to express uh, to you my, my warmest and sincerest gratitude. You know what, uh, I, I really, uh, as a person who takes some time to actually uh, analyze uh, soccer teams and that, I, I can tell you that you are building uh, for the long term. Uh, you are giving hope to, uh, to young soccer players. You're doing it perhaps in the best city in the country, which is also very good for you to do. Um, but I, I, I do want to say that you come into a place that is very warm, uh, a place where uh, 
315,000 people uh, proudly call the city of Vaughan their home. We speak 99 different languages. E voglio anche dire a Sebastiano Covinco che sei benvenuto anche nella nostra città. Spero, aspettiamo, ti aspettiamo che venite a giocare con la nostra, con la nostra Toronto FC e speriamo di vincere anche un campionato con un, hai un grande talento. Benvenuto qui anche alla città di Van, non solo a quella di Toronto. So I would just, uh, and of course, out the door as well, you're all welcome. Uh, as you know, there's a large fan base here in the, in the city of Vaughan. We, um, we, we have a lot of passions. One of them is soccer, and uh, it's part and parcel of who we are. Uh, we know we've partnered with exceptional people, an exceptional organization. Uh, we're going to do our very best here in the city. And I know the council is really excited, and so is the administration, and the over 1,000 people who actually work here in the, in the city of Vaughan. Uh, to become the best possible hosts to TFC2. Uh, we want to really be, be there. And, and, and I, I, I want to just symbolize this by, by telling you, Tim, that uh, I want the first four season tickets. Uh, so here's my check. It's a personal check uh, to, to say to you that uh, we will be there, all of us, right? Right? We're all going to be there. When organizations like Toronto FC believe in us, we believe in them. That's the way it works here in the city of Vaughan. And so here's the check, and uh, I'll come and pick up the tickets later. <laughs> As well, if I may, um, yesterday, we in council uh, proclaimed today, as you notice, we're ahead of schedule. Yesterday, we proclaimed today TFC2 here in the city of Vaughan. And, uh, I'd like to present you with uh, this official uh, certificate that basically says that uh, today is TFC2 day here in the city of Vaughan. Uh, welcome to our city. Uh, we welcome you with uh, open heart and, uh, of course, uh, uh, we embrace you as uh, we are. We feel very much part of this journey with you, and we will do our very best to make you proud of us. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. <laughs> and by the way, after this, you probably know we're going to do a flag raising. You know. Yeah. To borrow a phrase, we the Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have a full photo opportunity in a, a few minutes' time as well as the flag raising as well. But right now, if there are any questions from the media, there are microphones uh, that are out there. If you'd like to raise your hand, there will be a chance for some uh, media scrums as well coming up in a few moments' time. Uh, how is the stadium being funded? So, so right now, when we approached uh, Ron about this project, they were actually in the middle of building uh, a stadium in Vaughan uh, with the OSA. So uh, it will be 100% uh, funded by the OSA. Uh, and again, that just speaks to their commitment to soccer, um, which was actually occurring before we came on board. But now we're working closely together to make sure that it hits um, all of the sort of the standards for the USL and for Toronto FC. So it is a true partnership and, and obviously a commitment from the city of Vaughan and the OSA. So just to, just to clarify, there, TFC is not in, is not putting any actual cash into the development of the stadium or. Not a not a penny not a penny out of pocket for um, just a lot of hard work and 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 really going over the plans with the OSA. But this is a project that that it's, it's sort of going to take two phases, I think. And Ron can chime in if you if you would like to. But it'll start off with a 2,000 seat capacity stadium with the potential to grow to up to 5,000 seats. We've talked about other projects that are a little bit larger, but that's something that we want to. Uh, we'll focus on in the long term, but right now this is this will be an OSA stadium, and we'll be uh, we'll, you know we'll be tenants. We'll be holding our games there. But again, this is 
this was a larger project than just Toronto FC. This is about player development in uh, City of Vaughan, in all of Ontario. We're, we're looking forward to holding events there that, that, that really go beyond TFC. So if we have a game at night, perhaps there'll be soccer, youth soccer games during the day where the whole community can, can come and watch uh, soccer from the U10 all the way up to the professional level. That was very important for us. And also, uh, from, from the team, uh, from the first team perspective, how nice is it going to be to have your top prospects this close to, this close to you guys? I mean, is it, not that there's anything wrong with Delaware, but not having to make the trip down... Uh, or to North see Carolina. a USL pro team in another jurisdiction. I mean, it, it's one of the, 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 the reasons why we we fought so hard for this project. Um, many people here don't know, but this is this is an affiliation that Major League Soccer has with United Soccer Leagues, whereby you can choose either an affiliation uh, with a, a USL franchise, or you can hold your own standalone team. Um, we've decided to uh, commit resources and to form a partnership here to have our own standalone team. And I think that's a commitment, uh, speaks about our commitment to player development at MLSC and TFC. Um, last year we had a relationship with a team in North, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, and it was a fantastic relationship because, except for, you know, we had to fly da our players down there, connecting flight. Um, there was a technical staff who we were very close with, but it still is not our technical staff. It's important that the players playing on this team are under our roof, uh, identify with the culture of TFC, uh, and, can, and can quickly uh, transition from the academy up to the first team in our backyard. So those are some of the, the core reasons why we decided to, to field our own standalone team. It's about bridging that gap from the, first, from the academy to the first team. Um. Will Toronto FC2 begin play at the new stadium immediately, or will they be playing some games at BMO Field first? Um, we're currently working with the, the, the USL on, on the schedule. It really depends on, on when the season starts, uh, the number of games that Jay spoke about. But um, I think there's a possibility of playing maybe one or two games at BMO Field, but there's a number of things to work through. But we're really excited about, about obviously, the stadium here in Vaughan, and we're trying to, if ideally, we would – uh, play a road schedule before and then open the season up at the new stadium. Uh, in terms of players uh, for TFC2, when will you be or when do you have to announce roster decisions, who's moving from TFC to TFC2 or uh, in terms of signings, when do you have to announce that? Um, there's not there's not a date uh, in in Major League Soccer. There's a roster and budget compliance date that's March 1st, but in the USL it's it's a little bit later because the season typically starts in late March, early April. Um, again, the the league has not set out the rules in terms of how the players are going to be moving between the teams. Again, this is a new affiliation between the league and the USL, and I think it's an important step forward for soccer in North America. Um, I think it really will be a difference maker. But in terms of players moving back and forth, that, uh, that has yet to be determined in terms of what their contract structure will look like, uh, and it's tied closely to the new uh, collective bargaining agreement that uh, is, is, is being negotiated now by the league. This new stadium, what kind of food should we be expecting? Because you got a lot of culture going on here. Just out of curiosity. And we haven't discussed the menu yet. The menu hasn't been discussed yet. <laughs> Mayor, any suggestions? We're taking, yeah, we're, yeah, we're taking uh, recommendations and su suggestions. Yeah. You have one? will we'll, be nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice slices. We'll take, the lead. we'll take the lead from the mayor, and uh, he'll give us good direction there. Thank you. We'll pass the resolution on the menu. <laughs> One more question here, in the middle. Sorry, just uh, one last follow-up question. In terms of local development uh, teams in the area, uh, obviously there are several teams, uh, both uh, Ron and the mayor mentioned. Will there be links uh, between those clubs in TFC2 in terms of uh, players developing and moving on to that level, or is, it, is that a separate thing? You know, so we're, we're, you know, our first step was to put in, in place the team. Um, we're adding more age groups in our academy down to the U10 before we're at U12. So now we're, uh, we're adding a U10 team. So the first year, um, you know, with Greg and Jay and myself, we were really focusing about expanding the breadth of our academy. 
Um, but the next step will be uh, really committing to, to partnering with other clubs to make sure that everyone has the opportunity. So we will be reaching out and making sure that we have the appropriate level and number of tryouts. Uh, bringing uh, players in from other clubs requires a close relationship with them. It's not a, just about Toronto FC saying, we're the professional team, you know, we expect you uh, uh, to come here. It's, it's actually the opposite. It's us giving back to the community and establishing relationships with partnering with the clubs to, to, to share ideas because we're not here to say, and I think Greg will be the first to say, that we know everything there is about developing soccer players. Uh, uh, we think we, we're confident in what we do know, but, but we're, we're really committed to striking partnerships with other clubs, uh, sharing ideas, and making sure it's very welcoming for, for players all across Toronto. Further to Tim's comment, we'll also be offering the venue for use by League One. We had a very successful men's League One semi-pro uh, opportunity uh, under the leadership of Commissioner Dino Rossi, who took that forward last year. League One for women will kick off in uh, 2015 as well. And uh, I haven't heard anybody speak about uh, women in TFC, but I know that is on the, uh, the agenda down the road. Um, so this stadium, uh, through our OPDL, and uh, all the other uh, competitions that we offer where there's meaningful competition will be a great place for scouting, a great place for development to take place. And I know uh, Tim's vision and Greg's Vanny, Vanny's uh, position is uh, we'll use this venue uh, to showcase those opportunities. And at the same time, let's not forget about our opportunities uh, with our national body. Very, very important as we uh, take forward our national team initiatives, both on the men's and women's side. So uh, there'll be great competition uh, provided uh, through that uh, venue, and uh, we'll obviously build from that going forward. Question at the front on the left. Uh, uh, you were saying how the uh, construction is still happening on the stadium. Is there uh, an estimated date for the uh, first home game? First home game is July the 1st. That's our target date. Target date. Uh, this one for uh, Jason. Uh, what's kind of the goal for the team this year? You're talking, uh, you know, long-term development, but this year, what are we hoping to see from the team? Well, as always, as a coach, you, you know, you'd want a winning team, and, you know, it is a professional level, so we want that mentality to be in the players. But ultimately, my job is to provide players um, to Greg Vanny and the first team. Uh, we want to make sure that the players within my team understand exactly how Greg wants to play with the first team so the transition is seamless. But um, like I said, we're all competitive and we, we want to win football games, but the main goal for me is, is, is to have players knocking on the door for him. Thank you. Time for one more question. <coughs> we're good. There will be some uh, informal media scrums taking place in the, the room to, off to the side uh, following this, but one more question here. Um, from a marketing and advertising partnership standpoint, um, is TFC2 going to be handling its own local opportunities and grassroots opportunities, uh, or is everything going to be handled from a higher level um, corporately? Um, so right now, you know, our marketing and especially our grassroots level is handled by uh, a group at TFC. Uh, so we're very much integrated with MLSE and we have a group that, that you know, holds camps and clinics and obviously we have a website you can go on and, and learn about our outreach programs. Um, some of them are involved with the technical staff that's sitting up here. Others are with our other sort of expanded technical staffs. Um, but we'll be working with the city and the OSA to put on more grassroots programs. We're really trying to make this uh, a broader partnership where we can do more activities and more player development initiatives with uh, uh, within this partnership. Okay, thanks for the questions. Before we do the media scrums and then the flag raising outside, we'll wrap up proceedings for the day. The mayor has already handed over his check to uh, Tim, so that means he's the first season seat holder of Toronto FC2. That means he gets a scarf, yeah. a season seat holder scarf. So we'll have a photo opportunity now. So there is, there's the scarf. There it is. Good There'll also be... Uh, as a thank you for the continued support and partnership, uh, Jason and uh, Tim will present commemorative jerseys to the OSA and the city of Vaughan as well. So a couple of photo opportunities. But as the mayor holds the scarf aloft, ladies and gentlemen, Toronto FC2, thanks for being here today.
And joining us right now here in a historic day in the city of Vaughan, the president of the OSA, Ron Smail. Ron, what a crowd, what a day, what a moment in the history of grassroots soccer in Ontario. A new stadium coming to Martin Grove and Highway 7. Talk about how this all unfolded. Well, it started back in the fall of last year when uh, TFC approached us to say they needed a home for their USL franchise. And uh, so we sat down, uh, we sat down with the city of Vaughan, uh, there was a huge marketing study done and through that marketing study it was decided this was the place to allow uh, the uh, TFC2 team to play out of uh, Vaughan. So uh, we were in the process, as you know Anthony, of um, renovating and rebuilding our stadium and uh, the parts of the puzzle just fit together to say uh, let's work together and make this a great franchise going forward. Talk about how many seats will be there. Talk about when the completion of this new stadium will take place. Well, the stadium is scheduled to open July the 1st, and it'll be a 2,000-seat stadium. Phase 2, which is 2016, will be to 3,500 seats. Phase 3 in 2017 will be two, uh, sorry, 5,000 seats. And some of the renderings that are here, uh, it just gives you an idea of how it'll look at the end of the day. Ron, talk about the youth clubs in this, in this area, but all over Ontario. I'm sure that they would love to come here to this new stadium, a practice, play a game, Ontario Cups, you name it. Are they going to have that opportunity or will it be sp for specific teams only? No, it'll be for everybody. It's there for community use. So our Ontario Cup, Anthony, National Club Championships, uh, National Team Duty, whatever the case may be, our local clubs, Woodbridge, Vaughan, Glen Shields, Kleinberg, Nobleton, they'll have all access to it. Our OPDL, which is growing, also our League One men and League One women. Just a great opportunity. As I said, we're in the process of upgrading and we might as well do it right so that everybody can enjoy it at the end of the day. As we close it out, there's a lot of people to thank. TFC played a big role in this. The City of Vaughan Mayor Maurizio Bevilacqua played a role. So many people on your board played a role to make this happen. What do you want to say to all the people that put their head in the right place for the game that we all love? Well, we want to say thank you. This is about unifying our forces, unifying our boards, unifying our partners and our leaders going forward. So we're looking for a lot of stakeholders who want to be part of this project, and uh, we'll just continue that pathway going forward. Ron Smell, visions and dreams do come true. Once again, congratulations to the City of On, TFC, and the OSA. A new stadium on its way. And joining us right now, the new head coach of TFC Academy 2. Congratulations to a local guy, Jason Ben. Talk about the emotions that are going through your mind today on this historic moment also in the city of Vaughan. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic city. You know, we used to take the academy teams uh, just down the road to St. Joe de Arc and seeing the, the amount of support in the public to come out and watch those games uh, was always a very nice thing. Uh, for me as a local coach, somebody working my way up through the ranks, um, I feel honored and privileged to, to coach this team and to help develop these young men um, in order so that they have a chance to play with the first team. You know this specific area, it's blessed with a ton of talent. Talk about how you and your staff are going to go out and look and find local players in Vaughan to help possibly play for your squad. Yes, we have a massive scouting network, um, you know, from Gianni, Gianni Cimini um, all the way through uh, Peter Pinazzotto that I know and I've had discussions with, Carmen Yasako had discussions with, uh, Joel Chiraldi's in the community. So we have these connections and people that we know um, that we can rely on and sort of get information. Uh, at the same time, we want to uh, reward some of the youth that are in our own system and give them the opportunity to play as well. But it's a continuous sort of relationship between the two and ultimately we want to give local kids opportunities to play and to play in in their hometown and you've been rewarded with this massive job a canadian you've got to be proud of that but most importantly i've seen you in action jason you're a hard worker you're a tireless worker you're a player's type of a coach what are you going to bring to the table now that you're in charge of your own team well, i always like to look at it where you know some players need an arm around them some need need for you to crack down hard on them um, like you said, I'm a player's coach and I like to try and communicate with my players, but uh, we want to make sure that we're developing thinking players, players that understand the game and understand where space is in and understand why we're doing certain things uh, in order to, um, to exploit the opposition. So we want to make sure that our players aren't robots, you know, that they understand the game and, and, uh, and can, can improve from there. Jason, we'll close it out with this. What do you want to say to all the youth coaches out there in the Ontario Soccer Association, specifically this area, that might have a player or two that they want you or your staff to come and have a look at? And maybe they don't have that opportunity to have that outreach to you in person. What do they need to do to say, hey, Jason, there's a young man here. I want you to have a look at the play for you. What do they need to do? 
For me, I would just say to them, you know, have their kids always wanting to perform at the best of their abilities. It doesn't matter if it's raining, it's sunny, it's cold, it's wet, it doesn't matter because you never know who's watching. We have people in the community that we trust, um, other coaches that we have relationships with, and if a kid decides that he wants to take a day off and he doesn't show well, and on that particular day we have scouts watching the player, it doesn't bode well. So you never know who's watching and it's a process. Sometimes you have to be patient and work your way up through the ladder um, just as you do as a coach uh, in order to get to the level that you really want to reach. So um, that's, that would be my main thing. Don't ignore the process. I'll close it out with this on a personal note. Couldn't be happier for this young man here and getting the head coaching job here in the city of Vaughan with TFC Academy. Congratulations. Good luck, Jason. I'm sure you're going to produce guys to go up to the first team, and one day we'll see you up in MLS. Congratulations again, my man. Thank you very much. Tim, you're the first TFC general manager to embrace the grassroots youth clubs in Ontario. Why did you decide to finally take the plunge and get into this partnership with the OSA and with the city of Vaughan? Um, you know, for me, it's about, it's, it's what I'm passionate about. You know, I think it's really exciting to sign designated players, but uh, having grown up and played soccer, been, uh, it's been a, sort of a fabric of who I am and what people at TFC are about. Obviously brought Greg Vanny in because he uh, was one of the first people ever to start uh, uh, an academy, a residency academy in North America in Casa Grande, Arizona. So we're really committed to player development. And so it seemed like the perfect opportunity because of Ron uh, and his vision with the Ontario Soccer Association. It's not just about Toronto, this is about the greater Ontario. And I think we want to partner with the OSA in developing soccer players in all of Ontario. Stuart Neely, Jason Bent, local guy. Stuart knows this area. Jason knows this area. How important was it to insert guys that know this area? It's critical because um, player development is not just about what you know up here. It's about having the passion. Uh, passion for the game and passion for developing players in your community. That's why the homegrown system, uh, the MLS, has, 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 uh, has grown over the last few years is so important because the biggest fans are the ones you have in your backyard. Uh, the players will be more committed to the crest if they have grown up and played for that crest for, for a number of years. So uh, Stuart, uh, obviously, is someone who knows Ontario Soccer Association. He's a great coach. He's very organized. Jay has been with TFC for a number of years and uh, has coached at the first team ranks, but now at the USL, and he'll, he'll obviously continue helping with the first team as well. So it's important that you have coaches who know the community, uh, but just as much are passionate about player de developing players in the community. Greg, big day for the city of Vaughan. You know this area with League One. You know how the talent is explosive in this area. How important is it that you guys came out to this market to set up your USL squad? Yeah, this is, uh, for us, this is one of the biggest days of the year. Obviously, we've had some big announcements over the week, but uh, this is the one we've been working on all year. Uh, this was the key baby that we had in the lined up that we wanted to get accomplished over the course of the year. Uh, to have the opportunity to partner up here in Vaughn and uh, with the OSA has been amazing. It just stars kind of aligned and it, and it all worked out. Uh, I've been up here, like you said, many a times to watch League One games and to see this community uh, at work around the, around the soccer venues. And uh, again, we're, we're so fortunate to be up here and we look forward to getting started and, and the support that we're going to get up here in Vaughn. Talk about Jason Bent. Jason Bent, a Canadian, a local guy, Greg, he's here in Vaughan. He knows the guys in this youth community. Talk about him. Yeah, Jason is uh, hes a fantastic guy, first and foremost. Uh, when I came into the club last year, uh, I got to know Jason more as a, as a person and as a coach. I, I knew, knew of him uh, when he was playing in Colorado when he was in the league. We actually didn't cross over. I was in France when he was here, but I knew of him. And, and when I got here, you know, one of the first things I... I knew of Jason and got to know Jason was that he's a stand-up guy. He is a, as honest as the day is long, and uh, he's very straightforward in his thoughts and beliefs. Uh, he's got a great soccer mind. Um, you know, one of our thoughts was, as an assistant coach, Jason was was excellent, uh, and for him to continue to progress into in his development as a coach, that he needed to have a voice, a larger voice within a group and within a team, and uh, that was one of the big reasons we, we went to him. We, we believe in his future as a coach, but... Um, and that he needed more responsibility and he could handle it. And so that's why we went with Jason and we, we firmly believe we picked the right guy. Mauricio, talk about the massive youth clubs in the city of Vaughan. How important is this for the Woodbridge? Very important, very important, extremely important. Uh, this, you know, life comes down to one essential thing and it is hope. It doesn't matter what you do in life. 
and to be hopeful, to, to be able to, to dream that one day you can play in the major leagues, uh, to me, will be a great source of inspiration uh, for so many young people here in the city of Vaughan and the greater Toronto area. And to have the senior team also just down the street uh, speaks to uh, developing a soccer culture uh, that will serve uh, the GTA and indeed Canada uh, very, very well. We're dealing with an organization that understands the long-term game. Uh, they're not playing the short-term game. Yes, there have been acquisitions uh, uh, of Javinko and Altidore uh, that will serve uh, us well uh, in the uh, short and, and medium uh, term, but they are building for the long term. And that's how you develop a soccer culture, and that is how uh, you develop an organization uh, the likes of Barcelona and others. So uh, hats off to Toronto FC and the OCA uh, for having that type of vision.